Hello, Ellie here with Who Culture once again. I mean, the closer we're getting to the 60th, the more you're seeing my face on a daily basis. Hello, I hope you're not sick of me yet. It's the 1st of November. We are officially in the 60th anniversary month. So much has happened already, and literally it's the first of the month. The Hooniverse has officially launched, as of today, on BBC iPlayer. The first new exclusive entry into the Hooniverse on iPlayer, Tales of the TARDIS, has launched today as well. And, as I mentioned in last night's video, November 1st was when the next edition of SFX magazine was launching, and it's all about Doctor Who. I have my copy right here. When I tell you I've been on an adventure to get this copy today, my car wouldn't start, I had to get a bus, I don't even know the last time I got on a bus, it was raining, it wasn't even on the shelf yet, I had to go and ask someone where it was. Now, I will say before we go into any more detail that the things we're going to discuss that are in this magazine, just a teeny tiny tiny fraction of the information that is available in this edition. So if you do want all of the information and all the exclusive tidbits, go and get yourself a copy of this magazine. So obviously, as I said, there's plenty of things to unpack from this edition of SFX magazine. But one of the things that we took away is something I actually touched upon as a theory and inquiry a few weeks ago, actually. So it's long been assumed that when Shooty Gatwa takes over as the Doctor, that his series, his first series, would just continue the numbering that we have seen since 2005. So his series would be series 14 and series 15 and so on and so on and so on. It's now been revealed that that is not the case. And after these 60th specials, Shooty Gatwa's first series as the Doctor will now be branded as season one. Hmm. I have mixed feelings, but I'll get into my personal views in a second. So basically, when RTD was talking about the 2024 series, he said, next year, season one. Yes, we're calling it season one. I think that's actually quite shocking. I don't really know why. I guess it kind of makes sense, but to me, it just is shocking. I mean, obviously, I know that we have had this before in between Classic and Modern. So Classic Who was branded as Seasons, and then when 2005 came around, it started as Series 1 um, with Christopher Eccleston. So I know that's been done before, but I don't know. It feels different this time. I think because there's no definitive break between them. There's a, there's a distinct separation between classic who and modern who you know there was a forced break because it got cancelled and then all those years passed before it then was revived and it was a big celebration whereas here i know there have been gaps but it's more gaps because of external issues the show wasn't cancelled covid happened and things like that so issues that were beyond the control of production happened that meant those gaps had to happen but the show wasn't put on a break it wasn't <laughs> we were on a break Oh. Now, as of yet, there hasn't actually been any clear explanation for this, but I would imagine, I think it's pretty safe to assume, that this is something to do with the Disney deal. You know, if you go on to Disney Plus to watch Doctor Who that's never been on there before, and the only thing that's available to you is Series 14, you're probably going to be a bit daunted. You're going to go, what? I've got 14 series of a show to watch before I can watch from here and it's not even available to me? How am I going to do that? It's quite daunting to think that you've got so much to watch. I know that if I was to have started watching Doctor Who in 2005 and it was season 27 as opposed to series one, it probably would have felt like, how am I supposed to watch all of this? Uh, it doesn't make sense. I've got 60 years at this point um, worth of content to watch before I can understand what's happening. So I get that. Also, we don't know, we have no confirmation as of yet as to whether series 1 to 13 is going to be available on Disney+. Plus. At the moment, there's no indication that it is going to be put on there. And so, again, it kind of makes sense that if Disney are now going to be distributing it from here on out, they want to start from number one, not number 14. It makes it feel incomplete to them. I guess in, from a distribution point of view, totally makes sense. I get it. From a personal point of view, it makes me feel weird. Now I'm in a position where I kind of understand how fans of Classic Who felt in 2005, because I would imagine that a lot of people felt a little bit uneasy about the numbering change in 2005, but obviously for me, that was my introduction to Who, so to me it's never been any different, and now I'm on the other end of it, and I, 
I'm not sure how I feel. But I guess also you then have the question of how high do you go? Obviously Classic Who got all the way up to season 26, which is a pretty high number, but shows now don't generally get that far. They're not made for that long. There are some exceptions. I mean, Grey's Anatomy, I don't know what number they're on now, but I think it's over 10. In fact, it's way over 10. But even so, you think, oh my God, there's so many. If you were gonna start watching it now, you'd be like, ah, there's so much to catch up on. Then I guess it also does beg the question of, is this gonna be more of a reboot than we realized? Is this going to be much, like really different? to what we've seen before. I don't think we need to worry about that. I mean, obviously we know that these new uh, seasons are going to include characters such as Mel and Kate Stewart and Unit. So I don't think we need to worry that these new seasons are going to be completely new, new things that are gonna ignore anything that came before. I guess the only other thing that just makes me feel slightly weird is that obviously this is continuing the modern story in my mind. It's not, it's not a reboot or a revival. And you know, if you look at the 11th hour, for example, that was still series five, but you could probably start watching Doctor Who from there, from the 11th hour and not have seen anything that came before. And it would make sense because it kind of was a new chapter in the story and we had a new doctor. I mean, when you jump from nine to 10, Doctors 9 to 10, those stories are very connected, especially because that transition is bridged with the same companion. But when you went from David Tennant to Matt Smith, it was a clean cut jump to a new story, a new chapter, but they didn't feel the need to go, oh, well, we'll start this at one again. It just continued. That's, I think that's why I feel a bit weird about it because you didn't need to do it before. So why do it now? But I think I've answered my own question. It's Disney. It's Disney's involvement that has meant that this needs to happen. Also, I've also spoken about this quite a lot because I felt very, feel very strongly when people refer to the modern era as season one instead of series one because that, that's the difference between classic and modern. Classic is season, modern is series. Also, series is the British term and season is the American term. And I guess season makes sense now that we're expanding to Disney, which is an American company. And so we're kind of going into that Americanized version um, of, of labelling. Which actually leads me quite nicely onto the other thing that we noticed, uh, talking of Disney. There has been a lot of discussion online amongst the fandom about the lack of Disney promotion for the 60th. And we now have a bit more of an explanation as to why that is the case. I mean, obviously they, they did share the most recent trailer and there's the new Disney ident, the TARDIS flying, which is so cool. But beyond that, we haven't really seen much in terms of Disney promoting the, the upcoming specials. But this is what Russell T. Davis said about that in SFX. That's where the Disney launch will really be starting. Disney love these specials, are dropping them and going to support them, but the massive Disney launch starts in Redacted with season one. Because I think people are beginning to ask, why is there no big Disney push behind this? That's coming in Redacted. Now, just to be clear, Redacted is what it says in the magazine. That's not us just keeping information to ourselves and not letting you in on the details. I guess RTD mentioned a month in 2024 that he wasn't supposed to mention, and so that had to be redacted from the interview when it was printed. But that does make you question when in 2024 we are going to be seeing the new season one. I mean, we were kind of assuming April, May, because that's generally when the episodes used to drop. But the really short gap between the giggle and the Christmas special was quite shocking to a lot of fans. So maybe we're gonna see season one sooner than we realize. I mean, could it be January? Could it be that soon? We know that they're already filming season two. So could it be that soon? I mean, don't quote me on that. It's redacted. I don't know, but it just seems suspicious that that hasn't been mentioned. But obviously, now that we know that Disney's involvement doesn't really start until after the 60th, it does make you wonder how big this promotion is gonna be. I mean, if we've seen how much marketing and promotion we've seen for the 60th, and that's just from the BBC, then imagine 
what we're going to be seeing once Disney have their input as well. We know they're a massive company. I know some people are a bit concerned about the Disney involvement, but how big is this marketing going to be? Arguably, with Disney's involvement, it's going to be even bigger than what we've seen so far. I mean, Shooty's face could literally be everywhere. But obviously, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. We still do have those 60th anniversary specials to come. Um, we have learnt quite a lot of new information and tidbits and exciting snippets about those upcoming episodes from this edition of SFX Magazine. So as I said at the beginning, make sure that you go and get a copy of the magazine so that you can also find out all that information as well. We'd be here all day if I went through every single page, but it's very exciting. We do not have long to go at all. There's so much new content coming that it's just, Doctor Who has suddenly got so grand and while I don't want it to ever stop being that quirky British show that I've grown up watching, it's amazing to see what they can achieve with these bigger budgets and the wider attention on the show. It feels so well deserved. You know, Doctor Who has been around for so long, quietly building itself up, building itself up. Um, I guess in a similar vein to Star Trek. And now it's at a point where it's being recognized and being given, given the budget that it needs to make itself even grander but not too grand. Also as a side note, um, you know how last week I said, I don't know the release dates and then they announced them as we pushed the video. Well, last night I said, I wonder what the Hooniverse ident's gonna look like and had a big speculation and guess what they did? They released the ident. I don't mind because it looked amazing. So I'll forgive you this time BBC, but next time could you not maybe announce something immediately after I've said, I don't know what it is because my credit here is slowly dropping. <laughs> um, but basically, we've got so much stuff that we are discussing. Make sure that you just check out all of the videos we've posted in the last few weeks because we are covering all of the news and topics as they drop. And there might be something that you missed that we've touched upon. Um, in the meantime, I've been Ellie with Who Culture and in the words of River Song herself, goodbye, sweeties.